Hi, welcome back. My name is Chad Campbell. I am a certified functional medicine provider with Redesign You. And we are going to talk about heart. This month is heart health. And you're probably seeing all types of stuff out there about heart health and prevention and heart attacks and strokes. And I wanted to give you an understanding of how a functional medicine provider looks at prevention of heart attacks and strokes so that you get an understanding of, of why we may do and say what we do. You know, when people come into the office, the biggest concerns that I hear are, am I going to have a heart attack or a stroke? Or am I going to develop diabetes? Sometimes it's cancers, but for the most part, it's about the heart. And that makes sense because it is the leading cause of death in the United States. There is a heart attack happening every 40 seconds and over 647,000 Americans die from heart disease each year. But the scary statistic that's in our face with this is that one in five are silent heart attacks. That means there are no symptoms. So when people come into the office, we do screenings and labs on them, and we look at their EKG, and we're like, wow, you've had a heart attack. And they have no idea that they have had a heart attack. And that is irreversible. We cannot get that heart muscle back once they've developed that heart attack. So we hear all these things about um, the, the things that increase our risks of having heart attacks and strokes, like smoking and chewing tobacco and high blood pressure, high cholesterol, not being active, being overweight, diabetes, and those all contribute significantly to heart attacks and strokes, including genetics I mean, family history of this. But there's multiple studies now that also show that we can manage all of these and still live a very vital, healthy life if we approach it differently. So I want to talk about some of those ways to reduce our risks in the future and to, and to explain why we um, approach it this way for the prevention of these heart attacks and strokes. And I'm going to do a webinar next week on different laboratory and interventions that we can do. And then on March 1st, a good friend of mine, Dr. David Johnson, who is an integrative cardiologist of 23 years, he and I are going to do a um, live webinar where you can um, ask questions and we can try to help guide you through some of these, um, through some of these journeys with our heart and our heart health. So let's start off with cholesterol, as that tends to be the most common thing that we talk about when we talk about heart attacks and strokes. For many of you who have researched cholesterol, you probably have the visual in your head that there's a, a plaque built up in the artery, and over time it just continues to, to grow and grow and grow. And then when it gets to like 80, 90%, you're starting to feel a little bit short of breath, you're starting to get some chest pains. And then when it hits that 100%, boom, there's a heart attack. And that's why most medical professionals will prescribe statins and cholesterol pills, including myself at times, will prescribe these cholesterol pills to try to reduce those cholesterol plaque buildups. But the scary thing with this is that more than half of people who have heart attacks have normal cholesterol. And I'm not saying that cholesterol is not important. It is very important. But ordinary cholesterol testing doesn't even begin to tell the story of the actual risk of you having a heart attack or stroke. So if we keep that visual picture of that plaque inside the artery slowly building up, and that's what we think is happening, that is being very misled because that's not the more common reasons for us to have those heart attacks and strokes. If it was, then we would just monitor regular lipid panel, lipid cholesterol testing that we do. And we would add in some risk scores, like a Framingham risk score, which we do. And then that would tell us if we have high risk for heart attacks or strokes. And that's scary because we miss a lot. And I'm going to explain this to you coming up. Did you know that 20% of the cholesterol that you have is from what you eat. The other 80% is what your body makes. So that means if you eat perfect, your cholesterol panel will only drop about 20%. So 
So if you're at 300, you eat perfect, you might drop to 240 because the other 80% is being made up by your body. And that's if you don't have any genetic issues with cholesterol. So people will say, well, then I'll get a stress test every couple of years. Um, and then that can tell me my risk because they've been normal in the past. Well, do the stress tests really tell you your risks? The problem is, is that stress tests only detect a blockage of about 70% or more. And unfortunately, 86% of heart attacks occur in people with blockages less than 70%. Wow. So if the stress test detects more than 70%, but 86% of heart attacks happen to people less than 70%, we're missing 86% on a stress test. 68% of heart attacks occur in people with less than 50% occlusion. Never detected on stress tests. Never detected. So a stress test is not a good indicator of if you have high risk either. It doesn't tell us. You might know that person who ended up having a stress test and they were told the stress test was perfectly normal. And then one month later, they end up having a heart attack and dying. The true fact is that heart attacks don't happen the way that, that we see on TV. While the plaque and the cholesterol build up a very big deal, much of it doesn't grow in the vessel, but it actually grows in the vessel wall. It's in the wall. So you can pass your stress test and still be at a huge risk. This is why half of all cardiovascular deaths are sudden and unexpected. So let's look at this. We talked about how the heart attack um, many of heart attacks are caused by the plaque buildup in the walls of the arteries. So as you can see in this picture, the plaque buildup is in the actual outside of the wall, but the lumen or the opening of the vessel is still open. That plaque buildup in that wall is silent. We don't feel our bodies depositing plaque in those walls. We will feel the plaque build up inside of the artery when it gets up 70, 80% because we're getting short of breath. But here, the more common reason, it doesn't prevent blood flow in the artery. It's in the wall. And this is called atherosclerosis or the plaque buildup. It's lumpy and bumpy and it's supposed to be very smooth. And you can see how it makes that blood vessel very irregular. It's easy to see how it doesn't cause the symptoms. It doesn't obstruct the flow. And this is why we hear of the person passing the stress test and then dropping dead while mowing the lawn of a heart attack. So we have that plaque in the artery wall. Then something aggravates that plaque or insults that plaque. Usually some type of inflammatory reaction. And then that plaque ruptures into the blood vessel, causing a clot to form or a heart attack. So I want you to think of this plaque in this vessel wall here as dynamite. There's dynamite sitting inside of that blood vessel wall and it's stable. It's not causing any symptoms at all until it explodes. And this is what it looks like. This is in the person um, who, who died of a heart attack. The plaque buildup was in the wall, like what I just showed you. And then one day, that dynamite just exploded. Something insulted that. Some trigger caused that dynamite to explode. Because the lining there of that blood vessel wall is very thin. It's very thin. So then that dynamite gets triggered. It explodes through that vessel wall into the opening of that artery, causing that clot to form, causing the heart attack or the stroke. This is the reason why heart attacks and strokes are asymptomatic until they happen. This blood vessel is very small, less than four millimeters. 
And it doesn't take much for a clot to block that off. So if we look at this as you've got this dynamite, this plaque buildup in the artery wall, and then there's a detonator, a detonator that lights off that dynamite in order for it to explode. So when we look at this, we can prevent many heart attacks and reduce our risks if we can control the detonator. Inflammation is a huge trigger insult or detonator for our dynamite. When our arteries become inflamed, our body's mechanism kicks in, which is what we want. It's very good at what it does. But sometimes that is all that dynamite needs to be detonated to explode. That could be something as simple as bad gingivitis in the gums bad teeth, the sleep apnea, diabetes uncontrolled, gout, psoriasis, autoimmune disorders that are not being controlled properly. And the good news is that all of this can be controlled. It does take more time. Sometimes it does take some testing. But you are the one that gets to make the decision if it's worth it. You get to make the decision knowing that there's some dynamite and you want to prevent the detonator. So what you see above is just a small list of, of um, easily identifiable um, inflammatory red flags, things that cause inflammation in our body that might be detonators to set off this dynamite that could cause that heart attack or stroke. Some of you may say, well, I already have plaque buildup. I know I'm at 70%, or I have diabetes or insulin resistance, or I have high blood pressure. What's the use? The use is that you can still live a very long and vital life with all of these issues if you're able to control the detonator. So if we look at this, let's just kind of review this whole process and think about over time, we start to build up these plaques, which don't have any symptoms in our artery walls. We may get our EKGs, we may get stress tests, and they're gonna come back normal because the plaque buildup, is up, plaque buildup is in the artery wall itself. We have our cholesterol blood tests, which may come back normal because more than 50% of heart attacks are in people who have normal cholesterol. The dynamite is sitting in the artery wall. Something happens. It could be a stressful situation. It could be the gingivitis. It could be the, the, the blood pressure. It could be the diabetes. Whatever it is, the detonator gets activated. The dynamite explodes into the artery, causing a clot to form, causing the heart attack or stroke. So this comes back to our first slide and is our heart really safe? You know, we can't always rely on traditional laboratory testing for cholesterol, nor the stress tests, nor the true risk factors um, that, we're, that we hear for heart attacks, strokes, or, or even for developing diabetes. And it's even scary, as a matter of fact, that someone telling you that you're a low risk for heart disease or heart attack is, is giving them a false sense of security when we know that these laboratories and screenings we do are wrong. So sometimes we have to do different types of laboratory testing to check genetic markers and inflammatory markers and address the underlying problems that could be the detonator of that dynamite or plaque buildup in our artery wall. So I hope that even if you're being told that you're low risk, especially if you're being told that you're low risk, that you tune in next week because we're gonna be talking about different things that we can do to, to test for those detonators and interventions that we can do um, to try to reduce the risk of those detonators um, lighting off our dynamites. <laughs> and then in two weeks, um, the live interview with my good friend, Dr. Dave Johnson, and um, give you the opportunity to be able to ask the questions to help you 
to achieve uh, your quest for your optimal health. I appreciate you joining me, and um, I can't wait to, to have our time together again next week. Thank you.